Okay, so, you wanna know what's in my camera bag? I'll show you what's in my camera bag. It's gonna be a nice, nice quick video today. Ready? That's it. There's actually some filters in there. I probably shouldn't have done that. It's just, just Polar Pro filters everywhere. That's, that's, all, that's, that's all that I carry in there, just Polar Pro. <laughs> Not sponsored. On a serious note though, do you remember the days where people would have actually carried that many filters in their bag? Purely as a just in case, along with every other piece of camera gear that they own, just in case they need it. I was guilty of it. Somehow managed to like narrow down my daily camera bag, which is what we're talking about today. But I also have my travel bag, which hasn't been used in two years because, you know, haven't been able to travel. But I'm planning on doing uh, what's in my traveling camera bag video when I actually manage to travel somewhere that's not in the UK. So subscribe for that. But today we're talking about what I carry in my daily camera bag to just get through day to day life and get done what I need to get done in day to day life. Let's start with a bag, shall we? So it hasn't changed from what it was last year. This is the PGY Tech One Mo. It's a great bag. It's not quite what I want it to be. I can fit enough stuff in there for what I need daily, but there's not enough organization in there. And for someone like me that is terrible at organization, I need something that makes organization as simple as possible. And this doesn't do it. So I'm on the lookout for something else. Anyway, into the bag. I'm not sure what liter it is, but rear access, which is what we like, opens up like a door. Bam, that's what we got. Space enough for camera, a couple of lenses, another lens, audio stuff, bits and bobs. In here, I don't know if you can see that, there's like little battery pouches that have got like slidey things that basically show you red for being dead battery, green for being a charged battery, which is really handy. Although I just go by putting it in my camera because I always forget to slide them and I'm like, oh, that one's dead. And then we have a little pocket up here. It's like basically side access to be able to get into the bag, get your camera out from there. Never use it because I don't like the side access in camera bags with a little pouch here for passport, wallet or whatever. It's RFID protected, very good. And that's literally the whole inside of the camera bag. The space here in the lid, if you want to call it the lid, for like up to like a 15 or 16 inch laptop, which is really cool. There's two pockets in there, which is really handy. So you can put your laptop in one bit and then maybe like an iPad in front of it. And there's like a little divider, if you will, which will like stop you scratching your device up, which was actually quite well thought out. On the outside, you've got a pocket here for like a water bottle or a tripod or a gorilla pod, whatever you want to put in there with a strap to keep it in place. Always really handy. And then just like a little outside pocket, which I keep a beard comb because Got to keep the beard looking fresh, haven't we? Little elasticy bits in here for pens or lighters or whatever you want to carry with you. Little pocket in there for condoms, I guess. And then <laughs> hand warmers. Because if you're like me, you spend a lot of time in the mountains and you get cold. Funny story with these. Let me just put them back. I'm going to give you the best life hack you've ever heard right now. So I was away doing some work in December with all the boys and it was cold i mean like minus four and pissing down with rain and like 60 mile an hour winds it was disgusting and everyone was freezing i got a hand warmer put it on the boys if you know what i mean i was warm so life hack hand warmers are now willy warmers moving on so moving on to cameras generally i carry one camera body with me day in day out that i use for photo and video work and that is the Sony a7S III. Currently filming on it now, so this is what it looks like shooting 4K, 422, 10 bit, 24 frames a second, yada, yada, yada. It looks great. Perfect camera for me for literally everything I need it for. And I know there's gonna be people out there now going, why do you use it for photos? It only has 12 megapixels. What's well, that? I say, look at the photos that are on the screen now because they are sick. <laughs> and they were all shot on the a7s3 which i think produces better photos than the majority of the photos that come off the other camera that i carry occasionally which is the sony a7 III, which is a great camera still but the only reason i carry the a7 III is for if i do need to shoot something in a higher resolution or if i'm shooting 
say like macro stuff because you can then see the difference in the megapixels but the sensor is better in the a7s3 so the actual colors and everything comes out better i think that pretty much covers it <laughs> but the a7s3 in fact i'm going to switch over to the a7 III now to film me holding the a7s3 for you so i can show you a few bits about it so I switched over now to be shooting this part on the a7 III and as you can probably see there's a big difference between the quality of the 4K on the a7 III to the 4K on the a7S III which I'm holding in my hand right now. But this is the a7S III, my absolute baby, I love this camera so much. Flip out LCD, got a little TED sticker on there, link in bio. Flip out LCD so I can use it for literally vlogging because I can finally see myself while I'm shooting on a Sony. And then it's got everything else that I need it to have for everything that I need it for. Feels great in the hand. It's bigger body size than the a7 III. And I like that because I've got like gorilla hands. So this fits my hands much better than the a7 III ever did. And as you can probably tell, I absolutely love this camera. Set up exactly how I need it to be for everything that I need. And it just works. Okay. Lenses. I carry three lenses generally, and one of them is obviously on the camera right now, which is my favorite lens ever, but we'll talk about that one in a little bit. These two lenses stay in the bag at all times because they're super handy. First one we'll talk about, this is the Sigma Art 50mm 1.4, absolute tank. Everyone should have a 50mm. It's literally perfect for pretty much anything, I would say. And it's a great focal length for product photography, portrait photography, B-roll and videos, like you name it. Absolutely insane lens. Down to 1.4 aperture, which I never really use because I don't necessarily want that much bulker. But it stays in the bag and I use it for quite a lot of stuff. Okay, the Beast, the 7200. This is the G Master. It's the F4 version because I'm a cheapskate and I didn't want to spend like £1,600 when I bought this second hand for like 800 quid. And personally, I don't use a 7200 in low light, so the F4 is literally fine. If I'm all the way at 200mm, the compression from being at 200mm gives me the amount of bokeh that I'd be happy with anyway, so I don't need to be down at 2.8. And if I was to shoot in low light, then I use the A7S3, which is like the low light beast anyway so it would literally make no difference to me if i had the f4 or the f2.8 and i just thought it'd be better to save the money because it's perfect for what i need it for super sharp like ridiculously sharp reliable lens and it's you know what the 7200 is like it's just an absolute beast and then the other lens that we're going to be talking about which is the one that i'm using now which is literally my most used lens ever and my favorite lens ever looks identical to this it is the Sigma Art 24mm 1.4, enough said, like my favourite lens of all time. I'd say around 90% of the photos you'll see on my Instagram here, go and follow it because Instagram is dead and I could do with some new followers. But 90% of the photos that are on my Instagram were shot on that lens. Let's move on to filters, shall we? Now, there's been so many times where I've seen people that have got like a thousand pound lens and then... I see the filter they've got on there and it's about 50 quid and it just it hurts my insides why would you buy a really expensive piece of glass and put a really cheap piece of glass in front of that expensive piece of glass it makes no sense in my brain at all so please if you're gonna buy filters spend the money and get good ones please 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 <laughs> as you saw from the intro of this video i do have a lot of filters all from Polar Pro. Yes, they're expensive. Like, luckily enough for me, I didn't actually have to pay for any of them at all because I do a lot of work with Polar Pro, so they sent them all to me for free. I generally carry three filters on me day to day, not 30. <laughs> and the three that I carry is I carry two VNDs. They're both Peter McKinnon Polar Pro collaboration ones, both two to five stop. I carry the signature edition for if I'm shooting stuff that I don't need the mist. And the Mist Edition is the most used one that I use because it looks great for pretty much anything. Just having that little bit of mist in there if I'm vlogging when I'm outside, helps soften the skin, 
just gives a nice bloomish sort of look to everything, looks more cinematic. So that's the most used filter out of all of the filters that I use. And then the Signature Edition 2 VND stays in the bag in case I need to shoot something that I don't want that extra softness. And then the other filter that I carry in my bag is a polarizer, also from Polar Pro. And the main reason I carry this filter is because, as you may know if you follow me on Instagram, I shoot a lot of watches and they reflect, don't they? So having a polarizer means that you can reduce those reflections when you're shooting watches. But then I also carry it because I might shoot a car or shoot something that has some sort of reflection and it's just really helpful to have it as a just in case. But it's mainly for when I'm shooting watch photos. So it stays in the bag, takes up like no room at all and it's a great filter. Moving on to audio, I carry two different pieces of audio in my bag at all times. Is that right? Pieces of audio? Anyway, um, the main microphone that I use for pretty much everything when I'm out and about filming is this, the Deity D4 Duo. Great little microphone. I'd say it's similar quality to the Rode Video Mic Go, maybe? Don't know, but the reason I like this so much more is because it's got two microphones. So it's got one at the front, one at the back, obviously. And so helpful for vlogging if I'm out with my friends because I can be talking to the camera and I can turn the microphone around and there's a little switch in here and I can just switch that so it will record through the rear microphone and the front microphone. I can talk, ask my friend a question, it will pick up through the back microphone. My friend can talk, bang, straight through the front microphone. And then the other audio piece that I keep in my bag is the Rode Wireless Go 2 microphones. Just these little beasts, super handy little things just to have just in case I need to use them for any kind of audio thing while I'm out and about. If I'm feeling super creative and I want to put my camera down and then talk to my camera from a rock that's 300 meters away. Because I think these have like, uh, not 300 meters, but like 200 meter range. So I could do that. Maybe I'll try that one day. But they're just great little microphones. Always forget to charge them though. So generally I can't use them. <laughs> and I just forget that they're in my bag because they just sit at the bottom, taking up no space. Yeah, but they are great little microphones for basically anything you need them for. An absolute essential in any person's camera bag is memory cards. I carry a fair few, although there's not many in there right now, but I generally have, well, I have two memory cards in my A7S III at any given time. I have a 128 gig V90 card so I can shoot all intra. And then I have a V60 card, which is 64 gigs, which just stays there for any extra video needs that I need in case I run out of space on the 128. And then I have a couple more 128 gig ones, a couple of 64 gig ones, all around 170 megabit per second. And they generally just get used for photos or filming video in the A7 III because obviously the video specs aren't nearly as high quality as the a7s3 so i just keep some in there chuck that in the camera bag and it stays there in case i need extra memory cards gorilla pod you know the drill you know what it's used for super handy i managed to get this for a bargain generally these are like over 100 pound i managed to pay like 60 quid for this on amazon because they had some crazy deal on so nabbed it up straight away it's the 5k version with the ball head nice and big made out of metal Holds a heavy camera and it's just great. It hasn't broken on me yet, but I'm waiting for it to happen and then I'll have to just buy a new one. So Gorillapod, handy thing. Strap it to the side of the bag and it goes everywhere with me pretty much. And then the last thing that we keep in the camera bag is cleaning stuff because everyone needs to keep the camera clean and I am the worst person for keeping my lenses clean and stuff like that. So, microfiber cloth. This one's just a microfiber cloth from Polar Pro. Microfiber cloth. Lens cleaning fluid. This came from a company called Nightcore that were kind enough to send me a bunch of stuff. And that's what the rest of the stuff that's cleaning product wise in my camera bag is from. So, there's the lens cleaning fluid. And then, like, wipes to wipe down the lens cleaning fluid. And then this, this thing is great. So, you know the old. Air blower, the one that looks like a douche. They sent me another one, but this one's electric and it's so fun. Like USB-C rechargeable. Ooh, sorry, but 
as you can hear, it's quite powerful. So use it exactly the same as your old leaf blower. <laughs> Just do that. Clean your lens out, clean your sensor off, put your cap back on, Bob's your uncle, you've got a clean camera. I don't think it's quite as effective as these. Like these seem to be more directional because it's like a smaller hole, whereas this is literally like a leaf blower. But this is fun, so I don't really care. <laughs> and I don't generally keep my lenses and stuff that clean anyway. So this is just like a bit of a novelty, but it's fun and it's great. And it's got like clean air filters that you can change and yeah, it's great. But check that out from the company Nightcore. They're great company, great, great bunch of guys. And this thing is actually so much fun to use. You can use it to blow dry my beard if I'm out and about. I might try that. Wow, you probably didn't hear a word that I said then, but yeah, that pretty much covers everything that's in my camera bag day to day. Make sure you subscribe and like this video and leave me a comment. Let me know what's in your camera bag. And until next week, enjoy yourself and I will see you later.